Hi, I'm Gawain. And I'm Alex, a Childline Counsellor. And today we're talking about moving on from self-harm. Am I? I don't know. Like <laughs> Quick trigger warning, before we start, we are going to be talking about self-harm today, so if you're worried about being triggered listening to that, you can jump ahead a few minutes in the video to listen to our tips on how to get support, or you can go on and speak to a childline counsellor. So Alex, self-harm can mean a lot of different things. What, what is self-harm? Well, it can mean a lot of different things. Mm. It can be anything that someone does to hurt themselves on purpose. It can be a coping mechanism for that person, um, simply because they feel they don't have any other ways to cope. What can lead someone to starting self-harm? It can be something that has a big emotional impact on them. So whether that's abuse, uh, whether that's stress going on in their personal lives, it can be anything that they just feel that they are struggling to cope, so they're desperately searching for that way to, to deal with what, what's, what they're facing. What advice would you give for someone who's watching this video and they might be feeling a bit triggered or they might be struggling with thoughts of self-harm? I think the important thing is to create a safe space for yourself. So whether that be having people around you, um, while you're watching the video, um, whether that be removing things that you would normally use to self-harm so that you know that you're not going to go to them, or whether that be seeking support after you've watched the video, that's really important. And what can you do for that if you wanted to seek support? What, where could you go? There's lots of different places, so you might have people in your life who support you, there might be a trusted adult, there's also Childline, you can ring, you can go online, you can speak to a counsellor. Alex, how can someone cope without self-harm? Well, in the moment, there's things that you can do. So that might be distracting yourself is something a lot of young people find useful. So doing something you enjoy, having a conversation. Um, the other way is to find a way to let it out. So whether that be letting out your frustrations through punching a pillow, whether that be speaking to someone, an adult, someone at Childline, or it might be that you're a really creative person. So a lot of people, again, find drawing things or writing down their feelings really helpful. So say you've managed to cope in that short term, in that moment, what, mm -hmm. what can you do to help stop self-harming in the long term? There are lots of different things. So it's about, again, identifying where your support is going to come from. So who can you speak to about some of the issues that are going on in your life? Who can you go to and even just have day-to-day -day conversations with? Because sometimes that can be the most supportive thing. It's also about thinking about, OK, this is what I'm doing for the day. What parts of that might trigger me? What parts of that might upset me? And how can I then maybe avoid that situation? Or how, can I, how am I going to manage that if I'm feeling actually this might be a potential area where I'm going to want to self-harm? Obviously, stopping self-harm can take time. It can take a lot of effort. What, what are different ways that you can kind of help to make sure that you're tracking how you're doing and making sure that you're keeping, keeping up with stopping? So it's important to recognise those kind of positive times as well. Mm. So just logging, actually, today I did self-harm. But actually, for four hours before that, I managed not to self-harm. And that's a really good point about actually having times where you might self-harm, even though you're trying to stop, even though you're moving on. There's mm. times that you might want to self-harm and you might give in to that urge again. Mm. Well, what would you say to people who are worried about that? It's a person's coping mechanism. And that's a really difficult thing to let go of. So please don't be hard on yourself. Mm. But focus on those times when, you know, like I said, Actually, today up to lunchtime, and I faced this really difficult situation. I wanted to self-harm, but I didn't. And give yourself a little bit of praise for that, because that is an achievement. And that's a really good point, because sometimes it can feel like when you're stopping self-harming, it's about stopping for weeks or for months. And sometimes it can just be not doing it just that one time. It's going to be a gradual process. It's going to be an up and down process. But with the right support, you will get there in the end. So what kind of things can you do if you're, if you're trying to stop self-harming and you've managed to go a time where you've not, what can you do to reward yourself? Well, it's about thinking about what you enjoy. So whether that be, I don't know, it might be buying yourself something. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, then it might be something around the house. So lots of people enjoy having a nice hot bath or it might be rewarding yourself by watching your favourite TV programme or giving yourself a, a lay-in in the morning. It's just about finding that one thing that you, you enjoy and is a, is a real treat to yourself. Mm. So what kind of people can help you to stop self-harming? It's important to find that person who is, first of all, going to listen to you, that's really important, um, who isn't going to necessarily tell you what to do, but just be that listening ear. Um, someone who isn't going to even need all the details of what you're going through, but it's going to be there by your side in that just non-judgmental way. Um, and a lot of time just having that, it might be talking about what's going on for you, 
it might not be. It might be sitting and watching a TV programme together or just having that, that friendship with someone it can be really, really supportive. And it can be good to remember if you don't have someone like that in your life or you feel like you're not ready to open up, that you can always talk to a childline counsellor. Yeah, absolutely. What advice would you give to someone if, if they've got a friend who's self-harming? First thing to say is it's really important for you to look after yourself. So think about the support that you need in supporting your friend. Um, think about the people that you have to support you. And it might not be that you're mentioning what's going on for your friend, but just making sure that you've got that support in place and that you're not carrying this around on your own. In terms of when you're speaking to your friend, so it's about letting them know that you're there for them, letting them know that you're ready to listen, that you're not, you know, you're not going to judge what they're saying, that you're not um, going to necessarily tell them what to do. But just being there, being that listening ear and sitting down and having these conversations. And that's really good advice because sometimes it can feel like you have, to, you have to fix your friend or you have to try and do everything you can to make sure they stop right now when actually it's just about being there and showing that they're cared for. When you've been self-harming for a while, it can be really hard to stop. But even just watching this video and trying to find ways to help cope and move on is a really good first step and it's something to be proud of. Alex, thank you so much for coming in. It's been brilliant talking to you today. Pleasure to be here. And we'll see you next time. Bye.